5.47 and it's confession time. Today's winner of our smart speaker is Veronica. Veronica, thank you very much indeed for getting in touch. Sister Susie is sitting, waiting, uh, pencil in hand in the saloon bar. Uh, mm-hmm. Brother Matthew is uh, sitting in front. He has a confessions diary which he keeps. I do. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. I know. Who'd have thought, huh? <laughs> Veronica says, Dear Brother Simon, brother from another gutter, and Sister Susie sherried off her head. That's a, bit... <laughs> wow. that's, that's a little bit harsh. Mm. Let's see where we go. My confession goes back only eight years to a better time <clears throat> when holidays were the norm and sometimes taken more than once a year. How we miss those times, says Veronica. So we're off on holiday, and as usual, we were late leaving for the airport, where we had booked an overnight stay in a hotel on their executive floor. We had some points to use up, and this would allow us a light tea and a free drink. That's the executive, is it? Wow. Light tea. I mean, the luxury. (laughs) The journey down was, as usual, disastrous and added a further hour to our already extremely late arrival time. Our planned 8pm arrival was already looking nearer to 9pm, but it's okay. we could make it to the lounge for our freebies before they close at 11pm. We arrived at the airport parking, hump our cases to the bus stop and wait for the next shuttle bus. It says five minutes, but we waited and waited. I'm guessing the buses ran less frequently at this time of night. We eventually boarded at 9.30. It's okay, it's not too far to the hotel or so we thought. When we got to the airport, we then had to run from the drop-off point. Case wheels nearly on fire. They were being dragged that quickly. It's amazing the pull of free G&T has. <laughs> you made it to All this is just yeah. for a free biscuit and a G&T. <laughs> As we checked in, husband confirmed that we already, we'd already parked, so no need for their overnight parking fee. He then stopped in his tracks and exclaimed, I didn't lock the car. Oh, no. He goes back to the car whilst I take our cases up to the room. I text him to see how long he's going to be, and I'm told, waiting for return bus, he texts back. And the car wasn't locked, so good job I went back. It's now 10.45, we're running out of time. Where are you now? I'm on the bus, is the reply. <laughs> <laughs> he arrives at the hotel room door, bright red, sweating and panting. Up we go. Straight to the lounge. The door is locked. What? Oh, no. It said 8, 11, 8, 11 p.m. We bang on the door, desperate for our snacks and free booze, <laughs> only to be told through the glass that they were closed. We were too late. <laughs> so we trudge back to the room. Room service it is then. We called room service to be told that closed at 11 p.m. as well. Brilliant. So now what? Well, there is a well-known burger restaurant not far from the hotel, my husband says, so don't worry, my sweet. Uh, I will pop and get us a tasty treat. And apparently when he got there, the door was locked and there was a sign saying drive through only from 11pm. <laughs> this is my favourite bit. So bless him, he took his invisible steering wheel in hand, he drove to the window, knocks on the window. <laughs> McDonald's guy. Hello? Oh, it's drive through only, mate. I am driving through, says husband. Where's your car, then? <laughs> I'm in it. It's invisible. Peep, peep, that's my horn. <laughs> McDonald's guy says, OK, what do you want? <laughs> this is this is class. Phew, anyway, so we are going to get some dinner. I get a text. I'm on my way. Battery 3%. Anyway, so I waited and waited, getting very hungry. After ten minutes, no signs. I go wandering off around the hotel to see if I can find my husband. There's no sign of him, but I can hear an alarm going off. And I text him, where are you? Stuck in the lift, he says. (laughs) (laughs) Have you raised the alarm, I asked. That's the noise you can hear. I'm pressing the bell. (laughs) Do you need my help, I asked. But there's no reply. His battery is obviously now completely conked out. So I follow the sound of the alarm and find the lift he's in. And I'm shouting his name, but I've got no idea what floor he's on. So like in the movies, I try to prise the doors open. What? A couple of lads come by and I ask if I'm okay. And I quickly explain that my husband is stuck in the lift. And they said they'll go around and try and find someone to help me. Anyway, then a lady from the hotel arrives. And I fully explained to her angrily the situation. (laughs) That his battery was flat and he had some food with him. And that it's the hotel's stupid fault and we should be competent. <laughs> she then says, OK, and she offers us a selection of food from the kitchen and free drinks from the bar. And here is where I need forgiveness, because I went absolutely do lally and started shouting in no uncertain terms and using unseemly and indecorous language. 
for a woman of my age. I said, I don't want your stupid food or your stupid drinks. I want my husband out of that lift, do you understand? Then I added unnecessarily, haven't you seen Die Hard? How hard can this be? <laughs> it took another 15 minutes to get my husband out. I was so relieved I forgot to tell him about the offer from the hotel of free hot food from the kitchen and we sat and ate a cold burger and chips with warm drinks. <laughs> I need forgiveness for being a crazy lady, losing my calm, shouting at the poor hotel woman, but also to my husband. I need forgiveness from my husband for making us turn down the nice offer of a warm meal and some cold drinks. And I haven't told my husband this until now. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's a very, very stressful holiday situation, but uh, my, my favourite bit is definitely going through the drive through without a car. Pop, pop. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Where's your car? This is it. It's invisible. Uh, Sister Susie from the pub. Oh, Veronica, do you know what? Quite a lot of things went wrong there. Now, there isn't, you know, being mean to someone who works in a hotel was probably a bit mean and maybe I shouldn't forgive you. However, the invisible car that your husband did and all the things that went wrong, I'm feeling nice today, so okay. I'll forgive. Brother from another gutter. There's, there is so much going on here. Yes. I love it. I, I love the drive through I love the stuck in the lift and therefore referencing Die Hard. I don't remember Bruce Willis getting stuck in the lift at any point of Die Hard. But the, the, the thing that I love the best is turning up at the executive lounge with 15 minutes to go. What are you going to... Are you stuffing your trousers with custard creams? Yes. Goodness me. Uh, yes, definitely forgiven. Well done. Uh, OK, so the People's Verdict, please, 61054. Start your message with Simon. But the lengths that people will go to, as Veronica says... If it's just free. Just to get a free <laughs> gin and tonic. <laughs> 61054. First word is Simon. Simon at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Anyway, Veronica had a crazy uh, confession, ending up with a husband who still had the meal from the burger place in the lift. They got stuck in the lift and all for a G&T. They were trying to go on holiday. <laughs> it was all a bit of a mess and she ended up shouting and a yelling and using um, uh, unpleasant language. Uh, anyway, so the people's verdict is in and here it comes. Yes, Michael in Northumberland says, forgiven. I thought she was going to say he'd eaten the burgers while he'd been stuck in the lift so they'd have no food to eat after all that palaver. I'd have forgiven him for that. Uh, Tracy says, tricky one to forgive when you work in hospitality and I think I'll have to side with and defend the staff. I'm afraid, Veronica. Uh, Lindsay in Wakefield, I forgive, as I've never laughed so much at a confession before in my life. Beep, beep. And finally, Jerry says, it's forgiven. Pop, pop, remember. Pop, pop. <laughs> Jerry says, forgiven, because I'm loving it. Oh, yeah. oh OK. I Very understand. Good. I understand that. Yeah. OK, yeah, absolutely. An invisible car, sir? I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> no. Didn't work for James Bond. No. It won't work for you. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. You can get a smart speaker. More tomorrow. If you fancy one, send your confession in. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Pet Shop Boys. Classic Pet Shop Boys, of course. Uh, West End Girls. 14 minutes to. Let's see who today's uh, confession is from. It's Sally J. is sending tonight's confession. Thank you, Sally J. Father Simon, Brother Matt, Sister Susie in the pub. Though, uh, not in the pub today, actually in the studio, because uh -huh. it's all okay. I have it, well, it's not, when I say it's all okay, I'm not saying it's all okay, but it's all allowed, which is the most important thing. Is that okay? Thanks. That's fine. I have a confession to make, says Sally Jan. I'm hoping for forgiveness for something that happened some years ago. On my sister and brother-in-law's wedding anniversary, my late husband and I were asked to join them at a rather nice restaurant for a celebratory meal. How nice, I thought. What should I wear? You should know I have a rather comprehensive wardrobe, most of which should have gone to a jumble sale years ago. As it was a lovely summer evening, I settled on my sparkly, flamboyant skirt, recently purchased in Belgium. I don't know why I was surprised. I was surprised at that point. I don't know. That may well be the home of sparkly, flamboyant skirts. And for the purposes yes. of this confession, it is. I was quite pleased, says Sally J, with the look that I had just put on, we duly set off in my Mondeo Deluxe to drive to the Somerset Village where the meal was to take place. Sometimes it's difficult to park at this particular venue, so I was delighted to get a spot more or less right outside the restaurant. Perfect. We joined our fellow guests and had a very pleasant evening indeed. All was well, and we had that nice feeling that you get after a great night out. Unfortunately, that nice feeling wasn't to last very long because things started to go wrong the minute we got outside the restaurant. My husband took three large strides, opened the passenger door of the car, and got in ready for the off. That's strange. I thought I'd 
don't think I unlocked it. Oh, well, let's get in and go home. I went round to the driver's door and it wouldn't unlock. Uh. Oh, for goodness mm-hmm. sake, I exclaimed. I'll get in the other side and I asked John, who has poor mobility, to get out of the passenger seat and let me climb over and that do it that way. I got out, he got out, I got in, I had to climb over the gear stick and the handbrake, but eventually I was there. <laughs> okay. You've all done it, it's a big palaver. It was at this stage I remembered that my cardi, which I'd left on the back of the chair, was still in the restaurant. And as uh, oh. listeners of a certain age know, you, <laughs> you dare not go out in this country without your cardigan. Quite right. Am yeah. I wearing a cardigan? Yes, I am wearing a cardigan, of course. <laughs> yeah. I would have to go back to the restaurant to collect it. I asked John to get out of the car again. As I said, his mobility was bad. Yeah. Allowing me to climb over the handbrake and the gear stick and so on to get out. I couldn't ask John to get it because his mobility wasn't yeah. good enough. With the Cardi fully, uh, duly collected, we went through the rigmarole again. Okay, I'm climbing in. So I climbed over the gear stick and so on. Yeah. Let's get going. I put the key in the ignition to start the car. Alas, nothing. The key wouldn't turn. Oh, struth, I said. Or words to that effect. <laughs> Let me have a go, said my brother-in-law, who's at the back, who by this time had come from the restaurant. As my brother-in-law... Actually, he's still outside. As my brother-in-law is quite technically <laughs> minded, I decided that this was worth a shot. I asked my husband to get out again. Oh, no. Then I could climb over, and then the brother-in-law got in, and he climbed over and had a go. No good, he said. You'll have to call the breakdown, people. It's obvious what's happened, I said. We've had a catastrophic breakdown in the locking department. I prided myself on being the engineer in our marriage. (laughs) The brother-in-law vacated the car and I climbed in for the third time. I need to get my bag from the back seat and get the phone out. By this time, I'm starting to get just a little bit fed up. It's the ruination of an otherwise lovely evening. Looking around the car for my handbag and inspiration, I caught sight of all my rubbish. I really must clean the car over the weekend, I thought. It was the usual empty crisp bags, empty water bottles, tissues, several sausage roll bags from a well-known baked goods shop. My husband could never go past one of these particular shops without buying a sausage roll. Then I noticed white chocolate wrappers. We both hated white chocolate, as do most right-minded people. (laughs) Right. I quite like white chocolate. So I'm thinking, well, rubbish is okay, but this wasn't my rubbish. It belonged to someone else. Yes. And furthermore, so did the car. (laughs) Quick, I said to my exhausted, (laughs) long-suffering husband with limited mobility, get out! I clambered over the handbrake again, you get the picture, and we did what any other self-respecting couple would do in the situation. We legged it. Well, actually, says Sally J, I legged it, but my husband did a sort of lopsided hobble. Yeah. Surprisingly, we only had to leg it about 20 yards because we found another Mondeo Deluxe. Surprisingly, which looked exactly the same as our car. And unsurprisingly, the key fitted and we sped off down the road, leaving a cloud of exhaust smoke. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> no damage done, you might say. Could happen to anyone. No harm done. Alas, the next day when I picked up our discarded outfits from the bedroom floor where we had left them, I discovered that my sparkly flamboyant skirt purchased recently in Belgium was completely devoid of any sparkle it was totally and completely sparkless every sequin was missing there wasn't a single one left on my dress they must have all got caught on the handbrake in the gear stick when I went in and out (laughs) leaving discarded sequins in some poor bloke's Mondeo Deluxe he may not have had a reasonable explanation for this occurrence. <laughs> He's quite likely divorced and living on his own in a drafty bedsit with damp on the walls, unopened mail in the hall, and a half-eaten pot of fish paste in an otherwise empty fridge. Quite an image. Wow. Right? It's, well, you, you never know. And it all happened because I discarded my sequins in the wrong Mondeo Deluxe. And it is from this poor person from whom I seek forgiveness for having possibly... Oh, that was that very... Was smooth. That was wow. one of the best. <laughs> Let me just do a little shift. <laughs> just moving the gear stick. <laughs> just doing a U-turn. Mm-hmm. This is the world service. Wow. <laughs> anyway, Sister Susie, what do you say to Sally J, who left her sequins in a pile in the Mondeo Deluxe? Well, I feel like she should be also asking for forgiveness for her poor husband. You know, in, out, in, out. It's like the hokey-cokey in that car. And you know what? Sequins are the worst thing in earth to, to pick up, so... So they will I probably be still in that car right now. So for that reason, I'm sorry, I can't forgive you, Sally J. 
brother from another gutter. Was no one else looking at the car? Why is it all down to Sally J to get them all in the car? Can you not see we're in the wrong car? It's not all down to her, and she's got to get out, and she's got to go in, and nobody else is going to go in for the car, dear, apparently. It's all down to her. I don't see I don't see why she's got to ask for forgiveness. However, I do have my problem with the white chocolate. What's wrong with white chocolate? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with white chocolate. And also our Belgian cousins, well known for their um, sequins. From what I so remember. Therefore, therefore forgiven. <laughs> forgiven, of course. Obviously. 61054 on the text. First word is Simon. Simon at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Million moments ago, we had Sally J's confession uh, involving getting in the wrong car, leaving her sequins scattered in the wrong car. Someone got uh, divorced, though that's her just speculating, because it would have been an embarrassing discovery, and she doesn't like white chocolate either. People's verdict then. So Philippe says, forgiven, the husband got in first, not her fault. Uh, Dave the dog groomer says, not forgiven. Anybody who doesn't like white chocolate doesn't deserve to be forgiven. Uh, Jenny says, not forgiven, simply for not liking white chocolate. Nothing no. to do with the car. Uh, Andy and Wigan, I don't understand why she didn't unlock the driver's door from the inside after negotiating the handbrake and the gear lever, therefore reducing sequin loss and husband inconvenience not forgiven uh, but finally Charles says forgiven I once returned to my Austin 1100 in a multi-storey car park the key opened and started the car but as I drove down the levels it didn't seem quite right and I realised it wasn't mine I parked it found mine drove home only later did it occur to me that the real owner may have spent ages finding their car because it wasn't where they parked it yes maybe that should have occurred to you slightly earlier anyway uh, if you have a similar tale or maybe that's provoked a certain thought in your mind we'd love to hear your confession send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk uh, confession time don't forget uh, as we mentioned just a couple of days ago if you get if you get your confession read out you definitely get the smart speaker yeah none of that old-fashioned voting <laughs> that old-fashioned no, from voting. last week okay uh, we, we're now an autocracy we we, <laughs> we banished we banished the voting uh, so we, we become all authoritarian uh, and uh, so here's today's winner Sid it comes from um, <laughs> Sid says uh, Reverend Simon and the Holly followers uh, he might have meant Holy followers but I'm not, I'm not <laughs> what do you think yeah no. Holy okay Reverend Simon and the Holy followers in this confession it dates back to the early 90s by the way I should say <laughs> <laughs> go on I think it's a 12, definitely. And if you're eating food, it's a 15. Okay, right. Is that right, Susie, do you think? Yes, I agree. Okay, dates back to the early 90s when I was training as a medic. It's a little bit... <laughs> right, straight away. Straight away. Yeah, it's a bit Tuesday night BBC Two, isn't it? Okay. As part of this role and my qualification, I had a blend of written exams and practical studies. And this involved a number of elements of broad-based medicine and skills. So, as part of that, for two weeks, I was sent to cover night shift duties at a geriatric hospital. To picture the scene, it was a 1930s hospital with a horseshoe-shaped ward, high ceilings, wooden floors, metal beds, big windows. The ward was run like carry-on doctor with a matron that looked Exactly like the Carry On star Hattie Jakes. Brilliant. <laughs> Ooh, matron. Yeah. And so on. Although that obviously wasn't her no. that said that because she was the matron. As you may guess, it was not a particularly wonderful place, but the residents were lovely. Saying that, my shift, is the shift, started at 9 pm and lasted until 8 am the following day. Wow, sir. Uh, that's a big one. It never went off without an issue. After 1am, most nights, it was a cross between wildlife on one and down on the farm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> noise is ranged from... <laughs> I'm trying to say gentle puffs of wind, and I'm not making it. <laughs> Noises range from gentle puffs of wind to heavy drilling. Some nights we even had Elvis singing in the ghetto. So part of my so part of my role <clears throat> is to carry out blood pressure checks, change bedding, and other things. One evening, and let me give you a bed panoramic view here. Oh, yeah works. Mm. 
I went round the horseshoe-shaped ward and collected false teeth from 19 beds. They were placed on a tray working from left to right. After all, Hattie Jakes did have a system. Hospital quarters on the beds, everything had its place. If collected correctly, you would then have a U-shape of plastic cups with dirty teeth in. Sitting pretty on the metal tray. The next stage was to take the tray to the sluice room. I've then taken out a whole paragraph <laughs> yes, about the sluice you. room. Yeah. <laughs> I started the next stage of filling each cup with cleaning solution and water. The image here is, of course, a lovely foam top with little bits of menu for the day dancing on the top. After a long shift and a period of gentle poaching, the gnashers looked well seasoned. It was time to rinse them clean. Not an easy task, a bit like holding a slimy fish with cabbage um, attached. <laughs> OK. Oh, 90 minutes later, the brushed and washed sets of pearly whites were clean and fresh. Full of pride and with a spring in my step, I came out of the room with my handiwork and I started to put the teeth in clean bowls back around the room. Walking from right to left, nice and softly, as uh, to not to... I didn't want to wake the residents. The shift finished and handover started. It was more like a, a moan and run session with the aim of leaving quickly as the agency staff were arriving. As I walked towards the door, the residents started to wake as the breakfast round was in full flow. As they set up and tea was poured, the polished teeth were popped in. Now, I must point out that we had a range of mouths and a range of teeth missing. Some had bridges, some had complete sets, others just had a few teeth missing. It was like a ripple effect or a Mexican wave. What happened was this. Mrs. Smith started gurning, tea and toast flying in all directions, as the inserted teeth did not appear to fit. Then Mr. Adams looked as though his teeth didn't fit either, as if he'd swallowed a wasp. Mr. Wright, next to him, sounded like he had maracas in his mouth. <coughs> and so it went on across the room. None of them fitted. The only person happy was Mr. Peters, sitting bang in the middle, in the centre of the room, and the penny dropped. The teeth were put back the wrong way, so instead of going from left to right, I put them back from right to left. It was a madhouse, with teeth, gums, tea and toast all over the place. I exited the hall. After 32 years, Father Simon, it's time I put my hands up and said sorry to the team that had to fish them all out again and try and tidy up my mess. I was young, and that's all I can say. I'm still hoping that maybe I can be forgiven. But let's just see. Very nice fade uh, from Sid, <laughs> who's now a health and safety officer, he says. OK. Well, uh, uh, that was a little bit unpleasant. Uh, <laughs> Sister Susie from the pub. No, Sid, it just made me feel sick. And those, Can you imagine having someone else's teeth in your mouth? No, no, thank you. Not forgiven from me. Ugh. OK, we're running late because Susie's being brief. Uh, really? Uh, brother yes. from another gutter. Well, I'm obviously going to forgive just because that, that, that made me laugh quicker than any other confession has done within the, <laughs> like, the second paragraph. Yes. Well done for them on that. I mean, the problem is the system, isn't it? It's the system. It's not his fault. You know, it just goes to show you change the personnel. doesn't make a difference. Uh, if your system's wrong, that's your problem. Can't imagine how that would apply in any other walk no. of life. Hmm. Uh, so I'm going to forgive. Uh, when it's the people's verdict that matters, none of this nonsense in the studio. 61054. First word is Simon. Forgiven or not, 61054. Your verdict on Sid. Six, uh, we had a confession tonight from Sid. It's carry on again, doctor story. You got all the false teeth wrong, 19 sets of false teeth. All of them bar one in the middle of the horseshoe. Completely and utterly wrong. And it was memorable for a bunch of reasons. But anyway, the people's verdict is in. Here it comes. So Ali in Weymouth says, definitely forgiven just for conjuring up such a hilarious scene. Uh, Sharon says, uh, not forgiven. Sid should have paid more attention when they were putting them back and made sure they were in the right order. True. They were there to do a job properly, after all. Uh, but Sarah from Kent says, forgiven. I too was that junior nurse in 1984, except I had to go around asking the patients, would you mind trying these ones? Oh, nice. Smart yeah. speaker for Sid, I think. And your tale is expected. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. I'd be more excited. I think Good. That's that what it well says. Sold. That's what it says yeah, here. I believed it. Melted cheese with carrots on the way. Uh, and uh, another foodie thirsty with knives. But first of all, a confession to, uh, to the last one of the week. And another smart speaker going out. Because everyone gets them now. Our new top offer. This one comes from Constanzia. Hello, Constanzia. Or Connie, or Stanzi, Constance, whatever. Anyway, thanks, Constanzia. Here comes today's tale. Simon, I seek forgiveness from you and your top team. Love you all, particularly Susie, and also Matt. And also, what's that about? Yeah, second. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
<laughs> also, none taken. <laughs> so one, one of us yeah. left out conspicuously. Yeah. Back in the day, me and my daughter often went to York for shopping and boozy weekends. Shopping and booze. They were special times, Father Simon. Shopping and drinking shouldn't go together. And remember, always drink responsibly. But for us, they just did. Buy some makeup, have a drink. Buy some clothes, have a drink. Buy more clothes, have another drink. This could be tea and coffee, obviously, and cordials. Obviously it could be. Yeah. be available. It's not. We decided <clears throat> one Sunday morning to go to a service of mass at York Minster to level up the balance of wine, food and shopping. <laughs> This is apparently actually how it works. One balances the other. Yin and yang. You indulge in some excess and then you need some holy incense to waft it all away again. Keeps the universe in balance. And, in all honesty, my heavenly account was, I felt, in serious debit. So I needed to put it all right. <clears throat> my daughter, Father Simon, is quiet, quiet and shy. Me, not so much. I'm also Catholic, so I was treading in challengingly foreign waters in a C of E church. But all were welcome, of course, whatever your home team was. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. The Minster is, of course, a magnificent place. Completed in 1472, we were in awe. The Gothic nave, the perpendicular Gothic choir, and the largest expanse of medieval stained glass anywhere in the world. Yes, I had read up on it. We stood for a few seconds... To take it all in. Wow. Isn't it amazing, I said. Shut up, my daughter said. You're embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is the role yeah. Yeah. of children in general. Most people were sat to the right of the church, but I saw a quiet section, so I said, we'll go and sit there. My daughter said, are you sure we can? Because no one else is sitting there. Me, as Mrs. know -it -all said, we can sit where we want. It's a church. I think that's how it works. No place settings, no table plan, all equal in the eyes of the <laughs> Almighty. Amen. So we take our seats and slowly more and more people join us. Strangely, most of them had lanyards on. I said to my daughter, don't worry, there'll be tourists or something like that. This one particular chap stood up, he had a lanyard on, he stood up at the lectern in front of us and asked us all to stand. I'm thinking, well, the vicar isn't dressed too well for a minster. In fact, he looks rather shabby. Never mind. He then said, Shall we all practice our scales? I looked at my daughter and she looked at me, and apart from do, re, mi, from the sound of music, we didn't have a clue. Anyway, on closer look, the lanyards said, The English National Choir. <laughs> and that's who we were sitting with. Okay. <laughs> if they'd been a rock Choir, Father Simon, we could have joined in. I can do a fabulous cold as ice. My daughter does a great umbrella, Ella, Ella, hey, hey. <laughs> but this wasn't that. This was, and I'm guessing here, some of Handel's Messiah or some Bach <clears throat> or some Panis Angelicus, some Ave Maria. Yes, I've looked this up too. <laughs> I hummed along. Uh, I ooed and aahed. I muttered a few what bop a loo bops or what bam boom. But then, <laughs> led, because that's there's not a lot yeah. of that in Handel. No. Then, led by my moral compass, a.k.a. my daughter, we called it a day. I actually didn't need her comments, as you could tell from the stares and frowns that this choir thought I was a rubbish singer. And they were quite right. We lasted three numbers, I gave it my tuneless best, and we left. I'm hoping that they're a forgiving bunch. I mean, being immersed in all that glorious music, they must have gentle, understanding souls, don't you think? Choristers, I imagine, are jovial folk who appreciate a good cake fine ale and properly cooked sausage but maybe it's just me what <laughs> where are we getting that from but they knew that we were interlopers because we had no lanyards plus Constanzia, you couldn't sing that was the crucial yeah. bit so like many space invaders we had to shuffle sideways along the rows of choristers heads hung low and walked over to the other pews where the congregation had all watched us including the vicar in the correct attire. Somehow, I know that he knew. We sheepishly waited until the end of the service and left, flushed, embarrassed, very hungover and very red-faced. Please, I ask for your forgiveness, particularly from Matt and Susie, because I like them the most. That's Constanzia. <laughs> yes. uh, Sister Susie going first. Here we go. Well, I'm always up for, you know, fitting in a glass of fizz, whatever you're doing. So, uh, you know, I think, why not? If you're going to go uh, away too for much, the weekend. Too much. Just fit it in. And, and you know what? 
you had fun and you weren't to know that you weren't to sit there why didn't they put a sign so do you know what I, I'm with you I'm going to forgive really? you really yeah. I'll turn up for the books uh, brother from another guy. absolutely gutter. right Suze there should have been a sign uh, no one said anything I mean it's hardly their fault is it I mean the, the revelation that choristers like sausages I had no idea <laughs> either so to, a well cooked no a well cooked sausage a well cooked sausage um, and, and so yeah so I'm going to if, if for nothing else than Simon channeling is in a Derek Nimmo which uh, which managed to find its way into Did that you like one. That? Yes, very much so. Ask your parents. Um, Top so, yeah. <laughs> topical TV reference. <laughs> I, don't, definitely, I don't get it. Definitely forgiven. Okay, all right. But actually, when it comes down to it, Matt and Susie don't count because it's the people's verdict. That's so what true. counts. Does Constanzia get forgiven? It's entirely down to you. Uh, you take 61054. First word is Simon. You can email Simon at greatesthits.co.uk. Forgiveness was around earlier for Constanzia's confession about how she tottered into York Minster, slightly the worse for wear, and spoilt a whole choir rehearsal. But apparently that's fine. Anyway, let's say what the people's verdict is. What do we have, Matt? Well, everyone's forgiving. So, Betty oh, says, okay. all's forgiven on my part. They had good intentions, so nothing to feel guilty about. Sarah says, my rule is always that it's worth forgiving if Susie forgives. There definitely should have been a sign, <laughs> totally forgiven. And finally, Lids says, this lay minister says, totally forgiven. All are welcome. They have the guts to even go, so that's awesome. Plus a story for life. Totally forgiven. Pass the communion wine. Do you think a chorister, do you think that was a good des description of a chorister, someone who likes the finest things in life and a, and a well-cooked sausage? Well, I don't know any choristers, but let's just go along okay, with that. Okay, well, we'll find out. Anyway, now, listen, if you have a confession, particularly uh, confessions that take uh, take place in uh, in churches and cathedrals, I mean, they, they all sound fun. Yes. <laughs> Clergy in general uh, always up for a quick confession, I think. So if you've got one for us, we would like to give you a smart speaker. That is the deal. Uh, you send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk.